Hi everyone, I'm Cinderay9, welcome back to the Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. New day of recording, let's get some stuff done. Ah, oh, there you are, I've been waiting for you. You're awfully late, aren't you? Sorry about that, we kinda got caught by Colonel Richard. Did you now? He had some things to tell us about our dad. I don't think he has any idea what we're up to though. I see. Ah, yes. That letter of introduction did mention you were Mr. Cassius's children. I can understand at least some of how Colonel Richard feels. Oh, did you know our dad too? He used to come here when he worked as General Morgan's aide-de-camp. I'm told that he was a school friend of the late Prince's, Her Majesty's son. Late Prince? Princess Claudia's father. Yes, he was killed 15 years ago in a tragic shipwreck. Would that he were still alive today, none of this would be happening. Huh? But lamenting what might have been as a fool's errand. Evening is fast approaching. We must make our preparations at once. Come on in, Cher. Oh, hey, aren't you? Cher, right? Yes, thank you for remembering. You look well, Estelle, Joshua. I've been told of your current predicament. You won't find a more dependable child. She's a great help to us whenever the princess is in the castle. Princess Claudia. That shouldn't pose a problem. Th thank you. If you're ready, you should go change into your uniforms. That's what I thought. The ribbons in the headpiece are tricky, so I'll adjust them for you. Neat. What? What do you mean? You two are going in disguise. Estelle is going to need to dress as one of the maids in order to get into the royal keep. A little playing with the hair and you'll blend right in. Ah, oh, I get it. What about Joshua? Uniforms don't allow for much in the way of personalization. That should be ideal for sneaking in. Huh. Me. In a maid's outfit. I've been wanting to try on one since we first met Leela. Cute, breezy, easy to move in. <laughs> well, if our uniforms weren't easy to move in, they'd make the cleaning much more difficult. Huh, good point. I thought so. Well, let's get this sucker on me. Why so excited? I'm glad you're in high spirits, but you need to remember your manners in front of the queen. You won't have me to lean on this time. Why not? You're changing too, aren't you? No, there's no males that I've seen. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Uh... Pardon? I mean, he did play the princess during the play at the campus festival. Is there really that much of a difference between the fancy dress and the maid outfit? That's different. It was a play. I can't appear before her majesty in women's clothes. Oh, you'll be fine. It's not all that shameful or anything. Besides, you made such a gorgeous princess. N not this again. Cut the jokes, will ya? Hilda, she, she, help me out here. Say something. Anyone? I see. That shouldn't pose a problem. Shay, do you have that extra hairpiece designed for the princess? N yes. It's never been used, though. He has that full dark hair, so it'd probably look good on him. Hey, hold on a second. Well, looks like a three to one vote. Majority rules. Ah. Uh... <laughs> this way, please. We can use this as a changing room. Poor Joshua. Wait a minute! I don't remember ever agreeing to a changing! Ah! Alright, alright! If I have to change, I can do it myself. Uh, Shea, you're not planning on using makeup too, are you? <sighs> Kids these days. Ah, oh, looking good, Estelle! Oh my! Ta-da! You look completely different! Nice! 
Well, what do you think? <laughs> I think it suits her very well. Yeah, you look good. Such a bright, active maid in training. And after only just coming to the cancel castle, too. You certainly have me convinced. And with the hair down like that, no one will be any the wiser. Mm, true. Perhaps you'd like to work at Grenso Castle for real when this is all settled? Well, we already work as bracers, so, uh... Anyway! Come on, Joshua, get out here! <laughs> no chance I can talk you out of this? Not at all! You're just making this take longer! Fine. You're impossible sometimes. And if things go according to plan, get used to it! <laughs> wow! <sighs> Poor Joshua. <laughs> well, it's almost frightening how good that looks. <laughs> almost? <laughs> Isn't it awesome? It looks better on him than it does me! And I'm an actual girl! Nah, I wouldn't go that far. A bit of makeup can make all the difference in the world. Please, just say you're done. Well, I suppose so. I'll show you the way to the rural keep. You need to make certain you watch me and learn how a maid handles herself. Yes, ma'am. We're finally going to meet the queen in person. Yes, this is the do or die moment. We just have to stay focused and get to the rural keep. Sort of take you seriously in that outfit. Well, excuse me. This was your idea. Can't believe you got the nerve to pick on. Sorry, sorry. Don't get all mad. I'll treat you to some ice cream later, okay? <laughs> I'm not like you. I'm not obsessed with food. Hey, I'm not obsessed with food. Yeah, you are. <laughs> they get along so well, don't they? We're out of time. Let's go to the rural keep. Off we go. I like that she's in the lead too, that's cool. Oh, cool. Alright, let's save. Let's see, and upstairs, correct? All right, let's see if we can pull this off. Hilda, what business do you have with Her Majesty at this hour? I'm bringing some tea and spoons at her request. The current situation means that Her Majesty is denied the right to even go about her daily life as she wishes, after all. Such harsh words. Mm. Who are these maids with you? I don't recognize them. His Excellency ordered me to hire on some additional staff to help. True! <laughs> They've only just arrived at the castle today. Really now? Hey, you're pretty cute. Are you hitting on Joshua? Th thank you. Bow. Huh? Why do I get the feeling we've met before? You haven't? Crap. Do you stare so hard at every young lady you see? I do hope you're not thinking any untoward thoughts. I rather think His Excellency and the Colonel would disapprove. Hey, it's not like that. We're the elite of the Royal Army. We wouldn't do that. All's well then. Now, will you please allow us to pass? Pardon us, ladies. Please go ahead. Whew. Well played, Hilda. Well played. Whew, that was intense. Thanks, Hilda. You're a real lifesaver. Yeah, that was really well done. <laughs> I'm just glad I could help. Now then, are you planning to change your clothes before going to see Her Majesty? If you'd prefer, I could just show you the way now. I think I'm okay as is. No! Boy clothes! Now! <laughs> I'm, I'm totally with Joshua on that one. There we go. Oh, for the love of... Why are you always so self-conscious? What was wrong with you with what you had on? It's not an issue of self-consciousness. By the way, Hilda, is this room what I think it is? Yes, 
It's Princess Claudia's bedroom. She rarely sleeps in the castle, so the room is all but unused. Huh, no kidding. But I heard that the princess was tending to the queen. Hmm. I guess that's just gossip then. You'd have to ask Her Majesty for the full details. Her room is on the second floor of the Royal Keep. I'll take you there. Alright. Second floor. Here, I would assume. I beg your pardon, your majesty. I've brought the two I spoke of before. This is Joshua and Estelle. Thank you kindly. By all means, enter. As you wish. I'll wait for you here. You two go on in. Right. Pardon us. Oh. <laughs> I bid you welcome, Your Majesty. My name is Alicia von Osselis. I am the 26th monarch of the Li nation of Liberal. Um, I'm Estelle Bright. I'm a junior bracer of the Bracer Guild. And I'm Joshua Bright, of the same affiliation. It is a great honor to meet you, Your Majesty. Estelle and Joshua, I've truly been looking forward to meeting you both. I regret that I cannot offer you proper hospitality, but I have prepared some tea. Please, have some and relax. Thank you, ma'am. I see. So Professor Russell asked you to bring this information. A pitch black orbment capable of negating all other orbital energies. And you say that the Colonel has acquired it? The Professor told us you might have some idea of what he intends to do with it, Your Majesty. Can you tell us anything? Hmm. I have but a vague idea. But I did not think the Colonel ever knew of it. Perhaps I'm worrying about nothing, but even so... Excuse me, but what is this vague idea you have? I suppose there's no harm in telling you. Roughly ten years ago, a massive orbital reaction was detected beneath Gransel. Professor Russell was the individual who came to investigate. Hmm. Did this happen in the vicinity of the sewers? No, far deeper underground than that, in fact. Professor Russell was under the impression that it might be a relic of the ancients that still functioned. Wow! So, it was a bona fide artifact then. Most artifacts I know of have lost their function, like the mechanisms on top of the towers. But every now and again you find one that still functions, like Mayor Dalmore's family heirloom. And something like that is beneath Gransel? So what is this... What does that tell us about the Gospel? Maybe... It could be used to halt the artifact's functions? Could it do that? Yes. However, we were unable to establish the nature of the artifact, or indeed why it was buried beneath the city. But it's beyond my imagine imaginings that the Colonel could know of its existence. Professor Russell's research on it was kept strictly confidential and off the record. I see. Oh, but he knows. He's good at that. Intelligence. In any event, it seems likely that trouble is on the way. Honestly, just as I start to think that the Colonel might be a nicer guy, slightly nicer guy than we were giving him credit for, but when someone's trying to stir up some trouble, that's when us bracers come in. We won't let him get away with whatever evil scheme he's trying to pull off. <laughs> I'd expect no less from Cassius's daughter. Huh? You're acquainted with our father, your majesty? Uh, Cassius knows everybody. He was a friend of my late son's and a great savior to the nation. Even after he retired from the army, he would sometimes undertake requests for me. R really? 
Yeah, you know, I, I when I need the bet when I need something done. Again, want to see him live up to the hype. I didn't know that. <laughs> I imagine that there are a great many things about him that you do not know, including the precise role he played in the war ten years ago. I assume you've not been told. Well, nothing super detailed. Perhaps then, that is the role that I am meant to play. Estelle, Joshua, will you indulge me by listening to an old story? Oh, yes, absolutely. It is no indulgence, your majesty. Ten years ago, in the spring, a tragedy occurred in the southern reaches of the Ebonian Empire. Its cause is yet unknown, so that is something I must admit. The Empire used that event as a pretext for their invasion of Libra. So began the sad times that would become known as the Hundred Days War. Just as the Empire made its declaration of war, a massive military force breached the Hawken Gate. In what seemed like scant moments, all of Libra became occupied territory, save for Gransel. It is said that the invasion force was three times the size of the entire royal army. The reinforcements from Calvard were too late to stop their advance. It was but a matter of time before Gransel II would fall. But two months after the outbreak of the hostilities, the war changed in a way that none could have imagined. Patrol airships that had just been developed were used to recapture Liberal's checkpoints, severing the Imperial Army's communications. The Royal Army then set about recapturing major regions one by one using ships launched from Leston Fortress. Zeiss, Ruin, Boyce, Roland. With their supply lines severed, the Ebonian forces occupying each region were swiftly crushed. And the one behind this plan for a counteroffensive was none other than one Colonel Cassius Bright. So you could see, uh, with the little mustache there, you can see uh, Colonel Bright. You have, I don't know what rank he was at the time, Lieutenant, maybe Captain Richard, and of course General Morgan. It was your father who was General Morgan's right-hand man at the time, as well as Colonel Richard's superior officer. Afterward, with the intercession of the Bracer Guild and the Septon Church, the war was brought to an end. But it was at this time that Cassius lost what he treasured most in all the world. Lena, your mother, Estelle. That clock tower was destroyed in the Imperial Army's vain attempts to hold back the counteroffensive. What followed, I'm sure you know. Cassius was not even able to be by his wife's side in her final moments. No. Probably eats to him to this day. I had no idea and he believed that the military operation that he himself had planned effectively caused her death. Blaming himself, he left the military and took up the path of the Bracer. All to stay with the one he had left, you. And this time he swore he would be able to protect those he loved. Dad, that idiot. It wasn't his fault that Mom died. How could he even think that? Grief. <laughs> Grief is powerful. Estelle. Yes, you are correct. Given that all he lost was in service to his country, the responsibility falls upon me. And so, I am sorry, Estelle. I failed to protect your mother. I have wished to apologize to you for a long time. But, but you don't need to apologize. You've protected the peace of this country ever since the war ended. 
The piece that Dad and all the other soldiers who defended Libra in the war fought so hard to protect. And the piece that Mom gave her life for so I could live in it. You have nothing to be sorry for. <sighs> Estelle, you have a kind heart and I am grateful. It gladdens my heart to have finally met you in person. Now, more than ever, your majesty. However, that is why, that is why I do not wish you to put yourself in danger. I would like for you to remove yourself from any dealings with this matter. What? But, Julia, I mean, Lieutenant Schwarz asked us to help you. I thank you. I am grateful for your willingness to do so. But if some tragedy were to befall you in Cassius's absence, I know of no apology that could ever suffice. I ask only that you go back to your home in Roland and wait for your father to return. But... If I may, your majesty, the peace that dad restored and that you protect, though it has held firm, now trembles like a leaf in the breeze. Joshua. If the colonel is able to use the gospel for whatever purpose he intends, and if he succeeds in making the duke the new king a liberal, then what will become of that peace? I ask only that you consider that. Your Majesty, right when we became Junior Bracers, we inherited a whole lot of work from Dad. After the Sky Bandit incident, we got that letter and the package, and we've been running around creation ever since. It feels like our Dad's been nudging us in the back this whole time. That's why I want to defend peace so that everyone we've met and everyone we care about can go on living secure and happy lives. Just like you. And just like mom and dad. I'm doing this because it's what I believe is right. And what I want to see it, and I really want to see it through. Estelle. Mm -hmm. It seems she was right about you. Huh? I too am ready. I would like for the two of you to carry my request to the Bracer Guild. Your Majesty! My liege, we will do whatever you ask. My request is for the Bracer Guild to rescue those being held captive by the Intelligence Division. Amongst them is my granddaughter, Claudia. Aha! So the Princess is being held captive somewhere! Yes, this coup d'etat started when I backed her as the successor to the throne. In other words, Duke Dunnan was out of the running. Yes, although he is my nephew, he is possessed a, of a number, a considerable number of character flaws. Considerable, being correct. In brief, where he is lacking, my granddaughter shines. For the sake of this nation's future, I would have my granddaughter succeed me. Well, um, I don't actually know her, but I personally lean toward the idea that your judgment should really be trusted here. No matter the era, there will always be those who object strongly to a woman wielding political power. Not to mention, the memory of the invasion by a larger power is still relatively fresh. Some of them will perceive a succession of two consecutive queens to be a sign of weakness. It's hardly surprising that such a notion has taken root in the minds of some. Some, including Colonel Richard, I presume. Quite right. Claudius' pending succession to the throne caught him quite unawares. That, along with his passing of this information to the Duke, is what led to this coup. This was all staged so that Liberal could become a strong military power, with the Colonel ruling from the shadows. I see. That finally lets us see the whole picture. Called it! So if Libel became a militarized country, what would happen then? A great many things. Taxes would be levied to fill the war chest. Orbital weaponry would be developed with the express intent of causing havoc on a massive scale. A wide-range policy of conscription would be adopted. And no doubt, contracting the Jaeger Corps would be made legal which is not the case at present. Oh no! Indeed, 
the colonel has made very adamant requests that I enact such policies. I thought that such proposals were born out of genuine love for his country, but I never agreed that they were the right course of action to take. The Royal Army is not all that protects this land. We have worked hard to maintain treaties with other countries. Defending a nation goes hand in hand with free cultural exchange and trade with all other nations. To the benefit of all. I feel the same way, Your Majesty. Same here. Yeah, makes sense to me. The Colonel, however, finds such notions to be womanly and foolishly idealistic. And so he demanded that I abdicate the throne in exchange for Claudius' safe return. Ah. Many people have, have had family members taken to ensure that they would not dare oppose the Colonel. Including General Morgan? But I am the Queen, and I will not allow all I love about my country to be destroyed simply because of blood ties. Still, she is my only granddaughter. I cannot simply allow her to die. Your Majesty, please try to relax. We hear and comply with your request. We will see to it that the Princess is rescued from those who have imprisoned her. Thank you, both of you. With that reassurance, I will do all I can to oppose the Colonel's demands. Uh, um, ha have you any other requests, Your Majesty? The Gospel still has to be dealt with. And I don't think we should just leave you here. I appreciate your sentiment, Estelle, but the present state of affairs is not contingent upon my freedom or imprisonment. The Gospel shall continue to weigh heavily on my mind for a great many reasons. For my part, I will attempt to ascertain the Colonel's true intentions with it. Okay. Wow, what a totally awesome person! Agreed! Super nice, but with a seriously strong will. I hope I'm even one-tenth that cool when I get old. Cool? Did you actually just call the Queen that? Still, she definitely has what it takes to govern a whole country. Agreed! Yeah, I really want to stop this coup thingy and help her. That's definitely outside of Bracer jurisdiction. Well, first things first. We do whatever we can. Right. But you know, I'm still freaking out about what the Queen told us about Dad. I wonder if she's got any more tidbits that she'd be willing to share. Yeah. Oh yeah! Return to the waiting room at once. It's already after 11 o'clock. Actually, it's almost midnight. Whoa, is it really that late? The Queen spoke with us for a long time. If we stay any longer, it's apt to make the guards suspicious. Yep, time to leave. Uh... Save here. And... Well, I guess we can we can walk out of here. You going home for the day, Miss Hilda? Yes, I believe so. Just be sure not to do Her Majesty any further discourtesy. That's not fair. But please, relax. We're patriots to the core. That's good to hear. Now I believe that we shall be on our way. Pardon me. By your leave. By the way, ladies. Huh? I don't think we ever got your names. May we ask them? I, uh, um... Oh, uh... Hmm. <laughs> uh, mm. What name do we want to use? Hmm. Um... You know what? This will be cool. Use your mother's name. My, isn't that a lovely name? It has a pleasant ring to it. I, uh, th thank you very much. How about you, miss? You may call me Karen. Karen, you say? That's a very pretty name. You're too kind, sir. I'm rather fond of it myself. Are you now? Oh, right, we're at the Special Ops. My name is... I think that's just about enough. I sense an ulterior motive at work. 
No, I mean, at least not from us. Mm -hmm. Please, be safe on your way home. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's get out of here. Well, aren't you Mr. Popularity? It was like their eyes all changed when you told them your name. Hey, it was not. I didn't see you shying away from joining in the conversation. Sure, but that doesn't mean I wasn't nervous. Ugh, I kinda lost all my confidence there. Eh? Aw. <laughs> What's all the noise about, huh? Nobody likes you, go away. Oh, Duke Dunnan. Ah, oh, so lady of the court. Hmm. Hey, you maids. <laughs> you don't look familiar. These are two of the new hires whom I'm instructing. This is Lena, and this is Karen. They're still quite inexperienced, so I'm giving them some extra training time. Hmm? Shh. Do you recognize us? Not good. Give it how many times we'd run into him, it'd be bizarre if he didn't recognize us. Good point. I'm now, Philip. Enough with the staring. <laughs> it's quite unusual to, s to see coming from you, stiff upper lip and all. Please, pardon my rudeness. You look much like my niece. My eyes were playing tricks on me, it seems. I'm dreadfully sorry for the discourtesy. Oh, it's no bother. Please, don't concern yourself. You know, now that I stop and look, I must say that you both are quite lovely. You with the brown hair. You have a very healthy, clean look to you. Uh, as for you, I personally think you'd look best with that raven hair of yours even longer. I, I'm honored. <laughs> ah, yes. Lena, was it not? You shall attend to me this evening. Hmm? Uh, your excellency? You, I don't want to serve him tea. I don't think tea is what he wants served. Oh no, I'll beat you down and leave. We, we will run. Your excellency, your flirtations while flattering are best saved for another time and place. All of the maids in the castle work directly in service to Her Majesty Queen Alicia. I trust you've not forgotten? I know, I know. Some folks simply can't appreciate a joke. <laughs> this castle will be mine in a week's time anyway. Oh, is that a fact? We can set aside time for some fun then. A week, huh? So this is going pretty quick. Your Excellency, please no more of this. I do not mind when you drink to excess, but you know how your libido gets in such instances. I say this knowing full well that I may be reprimanded for- I just said I was joking. Enough. I'm going to bed. As you wish, Your Excellency. Your room is right over there. Bye. Oh. All right. Elena? You just let me know if you have any problems. Anything at all. I'll give you the best advice the future king can give. Uh, huh. Th thank you very much. <laughs> Aren't you cute? Yes, good, good. Mm, please, faceplant. Please? Please? No? Hmm. I apologize unreservedly for all, all the fuss. His Excellency will likely remember nothing of this come the morning. Please, set your minds at ease. I should certainly hope so. I am truly sorry. Madam and young missus, I beg your pardon, but I must take my leave. I feel so badly for him. I do too. Poor butler. He truly seems to bear the weight of the world on his shoulders. Oh, do you know Mr. Philip personally? 
Yes, ever since we were children. Though not nearly as one as well as we once did, thanks to the one he serves. I see. He sure seems like he's nervous all the time, doesn't he? I'll bet that everything between the Duke and the Colonel has him completely on edge. Probably, yeah. By the way, what was that you were saying earlier about me being the popular one? Duke certainly seemed awfully fond of you. <sighs> Please. I'd like to keep my food in my stomach, thank you. Oh, right. Back to before. I feel like I'm missing something. Why would the Duke want tea so late? Uh, well, you see... Estelle, allow me to... Elidicate the matter of tea and why gentlemen should never request it in polite company. Huh? Come closer. Hilda whispered something into Estelle's ear. Yeah. Now do you understand? Uh, yes. Hopeless. Completely hopeless. <laughs> Thanks for everything, both of you. If not for you, I don't know what we'd have done. Please, it was the least we could do in Her Majesty's service. I ask only that you complete the request she made of you. Uh, um, I feel the same way. I beg of you. Do everything in your power to save the princess. Oh, are you one of our royal retainers? Y yes, I regret that I rarely get the chance to serve her directly. She's so kind and open. She always treated me more like a friend than a servant. The thought of her being held captive keeps me up at night. I understand. Well, you can rest easy now that we're on the job. We'll save her. Shall we be going? Yes, yes. I wish we could have gotten a letter, though. Or something. I always want something in writing. It just makes things go... go smoother. Save here. Alright. That's gonna end this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and had a lot of fun. We're going to be... Hopefully getting out of here unscathed. <laughs> And reporting back into the Bracer Guild. That way we can let them know what the Queen wants. This is a heck of an order to get. <laughs> a request from the Queen herself. So, till the next episode, I'm Cinderay9. Remember to shoot for the stars and take care, everyone.